Hello and welcome to our corner of the internet. My name is Margos and today we're going to be going over my entire EDC collection including bags. So let's get right into it. So for the first section of this video, I guess the first thing that I wanted to go over were the wallets. So first up here is the one that I'm actually currently using. It's going to be the Trayvax Contour. So this uh, wallet, I believe, is in the brass variation, which is what I got. It's, I think, $165. Um, I personally really enjoy this wallet. I wouldn't say that it's the most um, convenient or the fastest thing ever, but I just love the craftsmanship and the design is so unique that it makes the wallet really fun to use. Yes, there are wallets that um, are slimmer. There are wallets that hold more. There are wallets that are more easy or more convenient to get into but this one i really enjoy just because of how fun it is um and i really appreciate the materials and the design um so yep this is going to be the trayvax contour we're going to try to go over this like pretty rapid fire because there is quite a bit of things that we have to get into but that is the trayvax contour next up is going to be another trayvax product and this one i actually got for free with the contour it is going to be, I believe, the Summit, the Trayvax Summit, but pretty much it is just a like piece of metal with a um, with some nylon webbing or something that you can use to tighten down, and then um, pretty much your cards just go in here, and you can kind of sift through the cards like that. Um, but it's similar in shape, I guess, to the Trayvax Contour, but it's obviously a lot more minimal, and honestly, I wasn't expecting to like this. Um, but it's actually pretty cool. I really do think that this is a cool product and they threw it in there for free So yeah, that was awesome. All right next up. We've got probably one of my favorite wallets and this is going to be the um, Open sea leather gun deck wallet now open sea leather was formerly Das Ophenemir, but they uh, rebranded recently um, but this is going to be the Open Sea Leather um, Gun Deck Wallet. I personally think that this is an awesome wallet. The cool thing about it is that it's made out of all folds. And the only stitching that you've got is going to be right here. And everything else is just folded. So um, it, it's just super a super unique design from a pretty small um, a pretty small business. Um, and the the person who makes this i think his name is michael bluth I, I in all of the videos that i mentioned this i always i'm never sure of the last name but it's bluth or bluff um but i think he's like a uh navy or yeah in the navy or whatever um so it's always cool to support veteran owned businesses um but yeah this is an awesome awesome wallet this is the gun deck i think in whiskey i believe or cognac I'm, I'm not sure what the color name was i think it was whiskey but it was a much lighter color before this um, so, you know, that patina happens over time and it just looks beautiful now. And I'm really in love with how it looks. All right. Next up, a wallet that I thought I was going to really like, but I, I don't really like it too much. And I kind of just hold on to it. This is going to be, um, the Nedrolo. I think it's like card sleeve. So it's pretty much just a, a felt like wool kind of sleeve. It's super simple. Um, Ah, excuse me. It's literally just like a, a felt wool sleeve. And it. I, the reason why I don't really like it too much is it's just hard to get your cards out. Um, and I'd imagine it's probably hard to like sift through them and all of that. Um, so I've actually never used this outside. I've just, I bought it and I never actually carried it. Hopefully I can carry it soon, but I just, after touching it, and fortunately it was pretty um, relatively inexpensive. I think this was like $15 to $20. 
um, after picking it up and w once I started using it, I was not super satisfied with it. Not because of the craftsmanship or the materials, but really because of the design. It's just like, it's literally just a sleeve. It's nothing bad, but I feel like there are better wallets out there. But since this is an EDC collection video, I just thought that I would show that off. Next up, this is going to be something that I believe I got off of Amazon. And forgive me if I don't remember the names. I'm pretty sure this one is called the uh, Vault Skin, or the brand is Vault Skin. Um, and this is just going to be a really slim, um, minimalistic leather wallet with like an elastic pull tab that you can use to... Here, let me show you on here. It has like an elastic pull tab that you can pretty much pull out like your cards that are in this uh, sleeve right here. And then there are also some other pockets like right here, my apologies, right here. And then there's also like a pocket right here. I believe it's made out of real leather, but it's like genuine leather. So um, it's not like the best uh, quality leather, but it feels nice. Um, I'll have to recheck over like what exactly the materials are, but whatever it says on paper, it actually feels a lot nicer in person and it's aged pretty well. Of course, it, it doesn't really feel like the most premium leather ever, um, but it feels really nice, honestly. So I really do enjoy this. This is a wallet that I've actually used for a long time. Um, actually, kind of around when I started first getting into EDC, this is the first wallet that I kind of got, um, and I really like it, and I still use it from time to time when I'm switching in between wallets. Um, so yeah, highly recommend this one. Also, I do want to mention that I'm going to try my best to link everything in the description below. Um, sometimes it's really hard to find links, but I will try my best to get a link for each of these items for you guys. Next up here, we've got the Bellroy Hide and Seek Wallet. So I like the Bellroy Hide and Seek Wallet when I'm carrying cash. And I don't often carry cash, but when I do, I always use this wallet. And I feel like this just has a great... Um, solution for cash because you can you have this pocket right here, but you've also got this kind of side pocket right here. Um, it's kind of hidden and you can like put like a different currency. You can put money that you don't want other people to see in there, or you can put money that maybe you want to forget about if you're trying to save or something, which is what I do. Um, there's a pocket right here that I believe is for like some loose change or anything like that. Hope you can see that. Um, and then I usually keep like my ID in this pocket, some extra cards right here, and then it's got some extra card slots right here. So in all, a very nice um, wallet. I really do enjoy the um, this one. There is this little weird mark that I don't know how it got there. Um, and I tried fixing it with some like leather conditioner or whatever, but it didn't really seem to do anything. So I'm not really sure how that got there, but I mean, it's fine. It kind of adds to the character of the wallet um but yeah bellroy is an awesome company their leather i believe is leather working group certified which means that it's sustainably sourced and harvested um so that's another reason to love bellroy they're always super um, environmentally conscious and this wallet is no different from their other products so bellroy super awesome hide and seek wallet next up this is probably Funnily enough, one of my favorite wallets, but it's also probably the most simple one. And this is going to be the Distill Union. I think it's called the Wally Micro, I believe. So all in all, this is just literally like a piece of leather that's been folded over itself. Or not folded over itself, just folded. Um, and you can see there's another color in here. This is actually reversible, so you can kind of like reverse it. But that's um that's pretty cool. I personally like the black version better. Um, but... It's super simple. It, it holds a lot of cards, surprisingly, and it keeps a super slim profile, which is what I like. You've got this cash slot, uh, cash, excuse me. You've got this cash strap, which is um, great for, um, of course, cash. And the elastic on this is actually really sturdy. So I don't really worry about this wearing out anytime soon. Um, and yeah, so the way you kind of access your cards is you kind of just pull this out. One cool thing, the other, the vault skin one has this elastic thing that kind of makes it snap back into place while this doesn't have elastic and there's benefits to that and there are also disadvantage disadvantages to it the disadvantage is that your your cards don't like easily or your your um i don't know what you call this but this pull tab it doesn't go down if your wall is empty but what i like about it is that it's not elastic so hopefully it should last a little bit longer because it's just like some webbing 
which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I personally, this is one of my favorite wallets. I really do enjoy it. Um, and yeah, it's pr relatively affordable. The leather is really nice. Um, I think this is about $45, I believe. I'm not sure. I'd have to recheck. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in it, it is the Distill Union, I believe, Wally Micro. Now, moving on, we don't quite have a, um, a wallet, but I wanted to include it in the, because it can be used as a wallet. I wanted to include it. This is going to be the um, Govo like ID holder. Um, and there are a few different versions. There's an aluminum version, a plastic version, and I believe a titanium version. This is really just like an ID card. So you can just like put an ID here um, and you can just slide it out. So if you need to identify yourself quickly, um, this is great for that. Um, I use it for my university ID, but you can also, I think, put up to like three or four cards in here. So I wanted to include it in here because you can like do double duty and just carry like one thing. Um, so yeah, it has a lanyard, a lanyard hole right here. It has a really nice clip, which is how I usually carry it. It's very sturdy with strong retention. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be the wallets. Um, let's move on to the next thing. What do you guys want to see next? Let's do knives. I feel like you guys want to see the knives next. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so for the part of the video that you guys are probably most excited for, it's going to be the knives. So my knife collection is actually pretty slim in that I only really have four knives, five that's a if you count the slip joint, but I'm not counting that because it's just some random slip joint that my dad gave me. Um, but yeah, so for this, we're going to go in order from my least favorite, not necessarily like I dislike it, just my least favorite up to my most favorite ones. Or maybe I should say like my least carried ones and my most carried ones. And then I've also got a multi-tool that we're not going to include in that in that um, ranking. So the first thing that we've got here is going to be the Kaiser Beg Lighter or Beg Litter. I don't know how you say it, but this is a really like slim, fancy knife. I would say that this would like really suit someone who's working in an office because I feel like it is very slim and classy. So this is going to be, I believe, VG10 Steel. Yeah, it looks like it's VG10 steel. It is a liner lock knife um, with uh, G10 scales. These are going to be uh, black G10 scales and it, oh, it has a uh, thumb stud. The action is pretty nice. The thumb stud is super easy to actuate. Um, it's in a really nice convenient spot. There's no jimping, but this is probably not meant for like, um, like super heavy duty stuff. Um, so the jimping, the lack of the jimping on this doesn't really bother me. Um, there is no like groove like there's um, as you can see it's a little extended here for um for it to be easier for you to actually with your thumb but it's not like grooved out so it kind of digs into your thumb a bit not too much of a problem but just something I thought I'd note um, and then you've got like this coated finish but yeah I would say that this is my first like EDC knife this is the first knife that I got um well actually the Kershaw cryo was but that one broke really quickly um so this, I would say, is like my first real EDC knife. I asked for it for Christmas when I was younger, um, and it's just stuck with me, and I really do like it. Um, since it's so slim, I'll usually take this on when I go like on a bike ride or something like that. Um, but other than that, it's a really nice knife. I love the shape of it. I feel like it's super classy, um, and it's easy to recommend. It's only like $50, and it uses VG10 steel, which I feel like is pretty good. Um, but yeah, we've got the K Kaiser Beg Lighter. All right, moving along, we've got the Spider Co Tenacious. So the Spider Co Tenacious is a very popular knife in the EDC community. I will say I do feel like it's a little overpriced for the steel that it uses. So I think it uses CR13 MOV, 8 CR13 MOV steel, um, which is fine. Um, but for a $50 knife, I would expect something like a little bit better. Um, but that's totally fine. It's got, of course, the thumb or the thumb hole, so you can spidey flick it. Um, and honestly, this is a super satisfying knife, and I really fidget with this one a lot. Um, this one came super sharp out of the box, and I really do like the leaf kind of blade shape. And it's got this, I think, flat grind is the way to um, describe it. I really do like it. There's no sharpening choil, which is weird. Um, I would think that they would include a sharpening choil, but it's fine. Um, 
I do really like the jimping on this blade because not only is the jimping really good in and of itself, but it also kind of rises up so your thumb naturally kind of gets caught on it. So the jimping on this blade is super nice. Um, of course, this is a liner lock knife, um, G10 scales, black, um, and the clip, the, the um, pocket clip is really nice too. I like the retention on it and it slides easily in and out when you want it to. And this doesn't have like a groove on the um, on the liner lock, but it does have jimping on the liner lock, which is awesome. It makes it a lot easier to actuate. So um, all in all, I really do like this knife a lot. Um, and honestly, like if I had some like brass or like titanium, oh, one second. If I had some like brass or titanium scales for this knife, um, it might be one of my favorites. Um, it's a really nice knife, maybe even micarta. I've never had a micarta knife before. Um, but yeah, I really do like the Spyderco Tenacious. I do feel like it's just a little bit too expensive, but I'm not disappointed at all. All right, so the next two are gonna be pretty close, but let's go ahead and start with this one. So this is going to be the Kaiser Uprising. So the Kaiser Beglider was my first, I would say, EDC knife. This is my first nice EDC knife. Nice, of course, being relative. This is the one that I spent more money on. This is my first splurge, I should say. Um, but this is going to be a titanium frame lock. Um, it's super tanky, and I really do enjoy it. Um, and it's got, I think, S35 VN steel, I think. Yeah, so it's got S35 VN steel, a super like um, chunky like flipper tab. Um, the uh, frame lock has like a little groove for your thumb to sit in, and it's also kind of extended, so it makes it easier to actuate. Um, and yeah, I, I, I like the clip a lot. The shape is really aggressive, more aggressive than I usually would take to like in my office or whatever. But um, it's still super nice, and anyone that I show this to really does like the design. Um, like I said earlier, titanium scales. The jimping on this is really good as well. But yeah, I really do love this. I love the stonewash finish on the blade. The bead blasted titanium is super nice. Uh, I do like the shape of the blade a lot. Um, and yeah, it's a really nice tanky flipper knife. I love it a lot. So that is going to be the Kaiser Beg Lighter, my first nice knife, the first one that I splurged on. Next up, we've got a recent knife, and if you guys have watched my channel, you've probably seen this one. Um, this is going to be the, I almost forgot, Giant Mouse Knives Ace Riv. So this, by comparison, is a very small knife compared to everything else. Um, but that doesn't change my opinion of it. So I got this one in brass. I believe this was $195. Um, and this is a freaking awesome knife. And this is my, the one I've been carrying the most so far just because of how lightweight and small and kind of unassuming it is. Like this is how it is compared to here. Let me use this right here. This is how it is compared to my hand. So it's a very small knife. Um, I really do enjoy it. It's got a really nice finger choil right here. So it's easy to get a nice grip onto it. And because it has a finger choil, the, jim the jimping is further up like so. Um, but yeah, the frame lock isn't quite as good as the Kaiser Beg Lighter just because it's not like protruded out, but there is a groove for your thumb to kind of fit in. Um, so that's nice. And uh, the opening, like the action is super nice. Um, you can do it like that, or you can do it with like a spidey flick because it does have a thumb hole. I usually use the flipper tab. I never really spidey flick it. It's just what I've gotten used to. Um, and it kind of, ooh, it kind of tears up my nail right there. I'm not sure if you can see. Um, but yeah, this is a um, super awesome knife. I think it's got like this um, uh, satin finish, I guess it is, um, or like brushed finish, I'm not sure. Bead blasted titanium on the side. You've got brass on the other side. Um, and let me see, what kind of steel is this? Because I don't think I've paid attention to that. I think, if I had to guess, I'm pretty sure this is LMAX steel. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. Of course, I'll have everything linked in the description so you can check, but I believe that that's LMAX steel. <clears throat> okay, so that was the last of the knives, but I do want to go ahead and include this in that category. And this is going to be my multi-tool. It's going to be the Gerber Clutch. It's just a super basic multi-tool. I don't really need a multi-tool that often. Um, but I just thought that I would include this because if there, if I ever do need a multi-tool, this is the one I'm going to use. Um, so it's got some like nice pliers, 
Um, and then it's also got a blade and a file. Here, let me do this. It's got a blade and a file. I use the file quite a bit. I never really use the blade because if I'm going to use a blade, I'll use one of my like designated blades, but it does have a blade here. It's nice to have. Um, and then it's got a flat head. It's got a Phillips head. Um, it's got some tweezers right here. I'm not quite sure what this is for. Um, but yeah, it's a super simple multi-tool. I personally don't use multi-tools that often just because I don't really need to. Um, but if I ever need one, I've got it. It's right here. Real quick, guys, I just want to say that if you're enjoying this video, then I would appreciate it if you gave it a like. And if you're really loving it, then maybe consider subscribing. All right, back to the video. All right, so next up, I think we're gonna go to the flashlights. Um, and the flashlight category is pretty small. I only have like, I think about three. So let's get into that. Okay, so similarly to the knives, we're gonna go in order of my, um, of my least carried to my most carried. So the first flashlight that I have here is going to be a part of like my first EDC kit, I would say. Um, it's going to be like the first EDC flashlight that I bought. EDC flashlight. I know that that term EDC, like put in front of something, is kind of unnecessary, but just for the sake of this video, this is the first like flashlight that I bought for EDC. And this is going to be the Olight i3T EOS. Um, so this is a super compact knife. It's super tiny, um, but I really like it. It's got, I think, a max output of like 100 lumens, I believe. It's also got like a um a weaker mode but yeah I, I like it a lot i've got it in this black color the clip is pretty cool because you can um clip it like so or you can use this part of the clip um it's got like this rubber on the button which is nice to actuate it's really satisfying um it takes i think triple a batteries i believe let's see yeah it takes triple a batteries um but yeah it's a super nice flashlight i have nothing to complain about um, if I have, like, if I'm ever taking an extra flashlight in case of an emergency, like, I might just, like, throw this in my bag or something. Um, but, yeah, this is an awesome flashlight. I really do like it. I have nothing bad to say about it. It's just that I've grown to like other ones more. So, the next one, and they're going to be from the same brand. The next two are going to be from the same brand. But this is going to be the Raylite LAN in Titanium. So I personally freaking love Raylight. Um, as you can see, I do own two of their flashlights and I just think that they're super awesome for the value. Um, like this is, was, I believe $80 and it's a titanium flashlight with amazing build quality and like a ton of like uh, different, um, uh, I guess like settings for like the, the brightness of the light. It takes, I think, I don't remember the name of the battery. Um, it takes double A's and I think it takes another type of battery. I'm not sure which one. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice light. I love Raylight. I'm going to vouch for them always because their lights are just super great value and they're really well made in my opinion. So this is the Raylight LAN in titanium. The next thing we've got is like I said, another Raylight um, light and this is going to be the Raylight Pineapple. Um, I think this is the Pineapple Regular, not the Pineapple Mini. Um, but this is going to be similar to the Raylite LAM, um, except, actually, I don't really know the difference between these two. The reason I bought this one was for my titanium, or my uh, brass EDC kit. And other than, like, a few differences, such as, like, the setting, like, the different, like, lumens, lumen settings, um, I don't really know much about, like, the differences. Um, I will say that I think this one, the Pineapple Slimmer, yeah, the pineapple looks ever so slimmer in the middle. Um, but yeah, I really do enjoy this light. Um, I think this one takes AA batteries only, I believe. Let me check. I think it only takes AA batteries. Don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, uh, Raylight LAN, or Raylight Pineapple, excuse me. Love this light. I highly recommend you guys check out Raylight because they make some awesome lights for really affordable prices, for relatively affordable prices, I should say. So that is the flashlight category. Okay, so next up we're gonna have um, pens. So I love writing. I would say that I am a writer. I don't write as often as I used to, but I do love writing. So pens are something that are super important to me. 
Um, and I actually don't have too many, but the ones that I do have, I really do like. So starting from the ones, again, the least carried to the most carried. The least carried one that I have, I think this is the Everyman Grafton pen. And this pen is all right. Um, I will say that like the paint and the finish sort of like wore off over time, but the clicking mechanism is super satisfying. Like it's very satisfying. Um, and yeah, there's not really much to say about this pen. It's just like a standard aluminum pen. Um, I think the refills are propri proprietary. Don't quote me on that. I do believe so th that they are though, because I did have to buy them on Amazon. Um, but yeah, I really do enjoy this pen, but I don't carry it as often as I used to just because I got things that I like more, such as the Fisher Space Bullet Pen. So I'm not sure which came first for me, the Fisher Space Bullet Pen or the Everyman Grafton, but I will say out of the two, this one was definitely carried more. So of course, I feel like everyone in the EDC community knows what the Fisher Space Bullet Pen is. It's really just a, um, a super compact pen, and the reason why it's called the Space Pen, or Fisher Space Pen, is because it has a pressurized ink cartridge, which means that you can write upside down in water, or in what no, upside down, I think, in water and in space, apparently. I've, of course, never tested that. But either way, it writes nicely, um, and... It's a super nice pen. It's super compact, which makes it easy to fit into any bag or anything like that. And you can put the cap on the bottom to make it a larger size, just so it's easier to write with. Um, but other than that, not much to say about the um, about the Fisher Space Bullet Pen, other than it's a solid option for people who are wanting to kind of explore the world of EDC and they want to get their first. All right, so next up here, we've got the Big Idea Design Click Pen. So this one is going to be in brass, and I really do like this pen. The cool thing about this pen is that it can um, take a ton of different refills. And the way that it does that is it can kind of twist to kind of adapt to the shape of different types of refills. Um, as you can see, the one that I had before kind of went up here because you can see like the discoloration, um, and I kind of knew that that would happen, so I don't really mind. Um, but I would say if I were to order this again, I would definitely go with the titanium version hopefully to avoid that discoloration that you kind of get um, with the with the pen right there. But yeah, it accepts a ton of different refills, um, which is the main feature of this. It's got a titanium clip here. The clicking action is really silent. Like, you can't really hear it at all. Um, and yeah, it's a really nice pen to write with. The um, refill that it comes with um, automatically is really nice in and of itself. But again, the cool thing about this is you can use any refill that you want. Um, and it feels super premium and it's well built. I highly recommend it. The Big Idea Design Click Pen. So next up, we've got my favorite pen by far, and this is going to be the Tactile Turn Bolt Action Pen. And I absolutely love this. There are a few reasons. One, it's just like a full-size pen, so it's not it's not like a really weird size. It's easier to write with over time, and it feels super comfortable in my hand. Also, the bolt action mechanism is super satisfying to play with. Um, the clip is super nice, and it's got like this, I think, stone wash finish. I think it's got like a stone wash finish on the um, on the clip. Um, and the um, to untwist it, it's super subtle. Like this line kind of appears after you twist it, but like otherwise, you wouldn't really be able to tell how you unscrew it if you didn't just like try or if you didn't know about it beforehand. But yeah, the Tactile Turn Bolt Action Pen is super awesome. It's my favorite one by far. I love it. And the default ink cartridge that comes with it is really nice as well. <clears throat> so yeah, those are the pens. Let's move on. All right, so we're going to go over this one a little bit quicker. Um, but these are going to be pouches. So these are going to be things that kind of fit your EDC. Um, first thing here is going to be a one that I found on Etsy. I think it's by night heron leather or something like that i'm not sure um i'm not even sure if i'll be able to find the link I'll, I'll try my best but yeah this is a super nice um super nice um organizer the leather is a little thin and flimsy i will say um but i usually put like a flashlight in here like the i3t eos i put the spider coat tenacious in here and i put the um fisher space bullet pen right here um but yeah this is an awesome little um uh, organizer it's not super sturdy so it, it's not the best 
I wish the leather was a little bit thicker, but it's totally fine. Next up, we've got the Arc Company. Um, I don't remember what this is called, but I'll be able to find the link in the description for you guys. So usually for this one, what I would do is I would throw the Giant Mouse Knives Ace Riv in this first pocket, and then I would put the uh, Raylight Pineapple here, and then I would put the um, Big Idea Design pen here. So this worked well when I had a smaller um, refill in this um, in the pen, but you'll be able to get kind of the gist of how I used it. It was pretty much just like this. Now, of course, remember that one of the refill that I was using before was smaller, so it, it wasn't like protruding this much. Um, but yeah, this is a really niche one. Um, it's really hard to find gear that fits this well. So I can't quite comment on the usefulness of it just because I don't feel like I've used it in the best way possible. Um, but yeah, this is going to be an art company pouch. I'll try my best to find the, the link so I can put it in the description for you guys. All right, so this is the Alpaca Hub pouch. And I think I got this off of pre-order, um, but this is a super cool pouch. Usually what the way I would use this is I would keep my um, AirTag in my little... Um, EDC coin in here. Sometimes I would also keep a microfiber cloth in there. And then in here I would keep a knife, in here I would keep a flashlight, in here I would put the multi-tool Fisher Space bullet pen, and then I've got some chapstick, zip ties, and some duct tape wrapped around a, um, a gift card. So yeah, I think the thing that makes this hard for me to use is just because it's hard to find a pen that fits into this. Um, the pens that I use don't really fit very well into here. Um, the only one that would, would be, of course, the Fisher Space Bullet Pen. But, of course, like, I want to use a different pen other than that one. Um, so, yeah. But other than that, this is a really cool pouch. My only issue with pouches like these is I never know how long the elastic is going to last. So, I'm always kind of paranoid about wearing out the elastic. But, yeah. So, my favorite pouch by far, and you'll probably be able to tell that by how worn it looks, is going to be the Yellow Birch Outfitters Pocket Pro. So this is definitely by far my most carried pouch. Of course in here, I would put my um, tactile turn um, bolt action pen. I would put my Kaiser Uprising, the titanium one, and I would put the um, Raylite LAN. Just put some field notes right here. And then in here, I would put an air tag. I would put a EDC coin and maybe like a microfiber cloth or something like that. And boom, you're done. This is a freaking awesome pouch, and I highly recommend it for someone with a full-size larger EDC. Um, really, the only thing that you have to be mindful about is uh, how large the flashlight is. But um, a Raylite LAN does fit in here pretty comfortably, and I really, really do recommend this to anyone who wants a pocket organizer. The Raylite, or not the Raylite, the um, Yellow Birch Outfitters Pocket Pro super awesome check them out all right we're gonna go through this one pretty quick um so these are just gonna be key organizers or key clips really key clips because i don't really use key organizers but um one of the first key organizers that i ever got was super simple it's literally just this titanium clip and it just clips on your pocket and the way that it works is you just like put your key ring on here and it just hooks under your pocket super simple I love this a lot because of its simplicity. The other one that I'm currently using is going to be the James brand. I think this is the Melbourne, um, the Melbourne carabiner. So this is awesome because you got two compartments and you can put your keys through here and then they'll fall in here and it'll just be more secure. And then you just hook it onto your belt loop or something in this top pocket or in this top uh, ring. Um, but yeah, the James brand, I think Melbourne carabiner. And lastly, we've got the Orbit key, uh, key clip. The cool thing about this is that it's got this magnetic mechanism that kind of helps you take off your keys. So pretty much you attach your keys to this ring right here, and then you just put this on your belt loop and you just snap it together. And it's really good at not really coming off unless you need it to come off by pulling this tab. Um, but yeah, this is an awesome key clip, my favorite one by far, and I think it's really innovative and cool. So definitely check out the Orbit key key ring. Okay, and before we move on to the bags, we're just going to go into some really miscellaneous stuff. Firstly here, we've just got my uh, brass Zippo lighter. I use this to light candles, um, and that's why it's got the butane insert, so it's easier to light candles and stuff like that. 
But um, yeah, I think that this, it's just a Zippo, you know, everything's kind of been said about the Zippo, but I think that it's a super cool form factor and it makes a really nice satisfying noise. The other two things are gonna be my handkerchiefs. So this is from Fox Hanks. I'm not sure if they're in business anymore, but I really do like these because of just the pattern and the kind of two-tone design. Um, so it's got this nice pattern on the front and then it's got this heathered sort of look on the back. Um, and yeah, this one doesn't have microfiber, but I don't always need microfiber. Um, this is just great to clean up spills and stuff like that. And then this is going to be my favorite one. This is going to be from Evergreen Hinks. It's got an awesome design. It's got this microfiber lining, and I really do like the stitching here, and it's a really good size. Um, this is my favorite. They're on Etsy, um, Evergreen Hinks on Etsy. You should definitely check them out. They're awesome, and they have a lot of cool different designs. All right, so for the bags, we're gonna start off with the sling bags first. Um, so one thing that you'll notice about my bag collection is that it has slimmed down a lot in like the recent in a, like the recent weeks really. I've just been selling all of the bags that I don't really use or that I find redundant in the collection that I have. Um, so my bag collection is actually really slimmed down right now. But the first one we've got here is going to be the Dad's Fanny um, sling bag. This one is probably my favorite sling bag. It's a really at a really affordable price of I think fifty dollars. I think I got it for like forty five. It's got a canvas front, YKK Aqua Guard zippers, um, and it's got a really nice nylon lining that feels super sturdy. Um, it's intended to be a diaper bag, but I use it as a um, as a just regular sling bag. It can be used as a sling or a fanny pack. Um, and it's super, super innovative. I think that this is an awesome bag. But yeah, if you're interested in this bag at all, I would highly recommend checking out my review that I made. I'll probably put it like in this corner or whatever corner, or I'll just leave it in the link in the description. Um, but yeah, I think I actually left something in here. Hmm, that's weird. I don't know how that got in there. Anyways, next up, we've got the Bellroy Sling. So this one is going to be, I think, a seven liter sling, I believe. Um, slings are super simple. It's really hard to say like a lot about them, but I will say that the material, of course, is like this canvas um, feeling material with Bellroy's sustainability st um, standards. I think this is made of like recycled water bottles. You've got your leather working group certified leather accents. This really nice uh, webbing that feels like a silky sort of seatbelt material. <clears throat> and the interior is really nice. It's got like a gray lining, so it's easier to see. You've got this felt kind of section, which is nice for, um, for like your phone or any delicate things. And then you've just got some organization here where you've got another blue lined, um, blue lined pocket. So I think for the next thing, since they're larger, I'm probably going to have to get some B-roll and do a voiceover. So we're going to go ahead and snap to that. So the main bag that I kept was the GoRuck GR1 21 liter. And this bag is just a tank. I freaking love it for its 1000G Cordura. And also it's just so simple. That coupled with its durability just makes it an awesome bag to use. It's super awesome. And if you want to see more of it, be sure to check out my, my review. I'll put it in the uh, top right corner or I'll leave it in the description. So this is the Stewart and Lau Carry Briefcase. Um, I received this for a review and I'm super excited to test it out some more. Uh, there should be a video coming out on this soon, but it is a fantastic briefcase. It feels super premium and the hardware is super burly. The leather is amazing. Absolutely love it and the organization as well. I know this was a super long video, so I really do appreciate you guys watching to the end. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, then I would appreciate it if you gave it a like. And if you really loved it, then maybe consider subscribing. If you guys want to see more of me, you can follow me on Instagram at MaroGhost. I'll leave that link down below. And I'll also, of course, link all of the uh, products that I could find in the description below as well. But that is all. I've been MaroGhost, and I'll haunt you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Here we go.